Hey everyone. I'm going to go over some things in English 101 that are due this week, uh, starting with the workshops and then the essay. Workshop 9 and workshop 10 are both just body paragraphs for the essay. You have the structure um, that we've been using throughout the semester. You start off with a topic sentence that states the main idea for that paragraph. Then you have evidence in the form of a quote and supporting details. And then you explain how that evidence supports the main point that you said in the topic sentence. To illustrate what a body paragraph looks like, um, we want to um, go to the reading, which gives us the five criteria for evaluating a Wikipedia page. So I went to Files in English 101. And then how to evaluate a Wikipedia page. The first criteria is the lead section. The lead section is a little intro. The lead section gives an easy to understand overview and summarizes the article's key points. We could add um, without including any unnecessary details. So let's take a look at an example. Where did that go? Um, this is a paper that evaluates um, a, the Wikipedia page on a cheese steak. The topic sentence is that first sentence right here. You wrote that in the outline last week. So if you have a good topic sentence um, that evaluates your page based on the lead section, you can use that for your topic sentence in this week's workshop. So for workshop nine, you just write this paragraph. This example um, is really good. It says the lead section, the lead or introduction, um, introductory section of the Cheesecake Wikipedia page gives a brief, short overview of a cheesecake. That's a positive thing, um, a positive evaluation. That's the topic sentence. Then the rest, um, like, and then here it's going to be um, evidence, and then after that, explanation. The lead section contains one paragraph that briefly explains what makes up a cheese um, steak, saying, quote, a sandwich made from thinly sliced pieces of beef steak and melted cheese in a long hoagie roll, unquote. If you quote um, in this paper, you'll do well. Although there is a section in the article that more deeply describes a cheesecake, the lead section doesn't interfere with that section in a way that repeats information. That's a good thing. That's explaining um, the details. The section also includes the different names a cheesecake cheese steak can be called, um, where and who it comes from, and a picture of what it looks like. In a Wikipedia article, the lead section is the place that can contain a lot of information that might not be clear or understandable. But in this article, it provides useful information and clear summary that is used to understand. So you would apply like the same standard or the same criterion to uh, for the lead section that it summarizes briefly the main ideas without going into too much detail. A lot of them can be criticized for going into too much detail. And if you quoted something then, you would quote something that is unnecessary detail. Um, but this paragraph begins by saying that the lead section gives a short, brief overview of a, um, a cheesecake. Um, yours will say the lead section does or does not do that for your article. Then it presents evidence in the form of a quote as well as supporting details. This is the evidence right here, a nice quote, and then more details and two more sentences, and then down here, an explanation of why the cheesecake lead section is a good lead section. It's because it is short and gives the main ideas without going into too much detail. So this is what para um, this is what um, workshop nine might look like. You could do this on any one, but it could be a good idea to start with this. So if we go back and we look at for workshop 10, the next thing to evaluate, we have to evaluate the lead section, the structure, the balance, the neutral, and then the, um, the reliability of the sources. The structure is another good one in, um, to um, include as a second um, paragraph, body paragraph, um, which you could use for workshop 10. So what um, we're looking for is a clear structure that's logical. There are several headings and subheadings, images and diagrams at appropriate places and references at the end. The main thing, though, is that the structure is clear and logical, that it's organized in a way that makes sense to most readers. 
if we look at the body paragraph for this, um, it says, the structure of the um, cheesecake page is well organized, making it easy to follow and understand. That's a great topic sentence because it states the main idea and it gives the keyword structure. And then what we can expect is evidence to come next. When you look at the page, the first um, heading after the lead section is the history of the cheesecake, which makes sense to go first because anything uh, before anything, the reader needs to know the origin of cheesecake. Cheese cheese steak. <laughs> um, so this first part presents evidence because it goes into a supporting detail. It says that the next section is history. And then the next part of that, the second part of that sentence, the subordinate clause, which makes us, um, sense to go first before anything else, that um, explains the quote to the reader. So this sentence says two things. It presents evidence and then it explains the evidence in one sentence. The history section gives a short and um, informational summary that is clear to understand. Transitioning to the description section from the history section is coherent. Um, after ta um, talking about the history of the cheesecake, the reader will get to, um, because after talking about the history of the cheesecake, the reader will get to know more about what ingredients are in the cheesecake, cheese steak. So this description Maybe we should capitalize that just to show that that's a section and maybe it would be good to capitalize history, right? Um, but again, that what that does in one sentence is it presents evidence. Here's the next thing after history, description, and in the uh, at because, another subordinate clause, it says, um, it explains why that's important. The description section has subheadings which are each titled by the main ingredient of the cheesecake, making it easy for the reader to follow. So easy to follow, explaining what details make it easy to follow. I think that the subheadings are a good idea to include because the reader can easily find when they are talking about the meat, cheese, or bread. The next section is a short section about the different variations of cheesesteaks. Although it is a short section, it's better that it has its own section because if it were combined with the description section, the reader can't, um, could get confused. At the end of the page is the references um, section, which is also important for the structure of the article. So this paragraph goes through kind of like um, and explains why the organization of the page um, makes sense to um, make sense logically. And so this would be an example of what you could submit for workshop 10. The remaining paragraphs evaluate the Wikipedia page based on other standards or criteria. And so um, I'm going to go through those really quickly without reading the whole page. Um, so the next criteria is neutral, and we can find that. Remember, if you go to files in English 101 and you click on um, how to evaluate a Wikipedia page, or you find it in the modules, that's what we're using. So we just did the lead section for workshop nine, structure for 10. Balance comes next in um, a lot of papers, but I think this um, writer is um, using emphatic structure and it's gonna end with a negative. Um, so they talk about neutral and maybe balance is gonna be negative. You can use whatever order you want. Um, it says, throughout the Cheesecake article, the coverage is neutral and doesn't have any bias. Bias is when things favor, or, um, like they're for someone or against someone, um, and it's not objective. It's not sort of like, um, it's not totally fair. It's like based on people's opinions of good or bad. And the article shouldn't be um, biased in favor um, or against um, the topic. The best way to show that is quoting. So it says, throughout the Cheesecake article, the coverage is neutral and doesn't have any bias. I think it's taking the language right from here. Um, coverage, pardon me, is neutral. Um, okay. Um, and then it presents um, specific details. It says, Philadelphians, Patton, um, Harry, Olivieri um, are often credited with inventing the sandwich by serving chopped steak on an Italian roll in the early 1930s. This statement is followed by two sources, blah, blah, blah. So you, you quote to show that something is not is not biased, and then you explain that it's not biased. Um, sometimes there's information in Wikipedia articles that are quotes from other sources or 
um, quote, yeah, they're quotes from other sources. And if the quote is like biased in favor or against, it's okay as long as the article itself is not. But you want to quote the article to show that. Um, the references, remember the references are kind of, you, you want to pick a source that has less than 50 references so that you can click each reference to make sure that it doesn't go, that it takes you to a page that actually has information on the source instead of being a dead link. Most of the time you'll find dead links, one or two is okay, but if you find like three or more, that's probably a problem. You would criticize the page a little bit for not having updated references. Here, again, use the language from that source, which I found in English 101 in files, how to evaluate a Wikipedia page. Um, it's talking about the sources. The article has plenty of footnotes and links to reliable sources at the bottom. Sources should be high quality um, and, scholar, um, and scholarly. The article about the moon should have links to NASA's website, etc. So it says the references, whether it be sources, footnotes, or evidence, is important in, in determining if something is reliable and convincing. The references that the article includes um, are a lot, but overall most of them are reliable and active. That could be restated more accurately. The references... Um, Are reliable and active. The only problem is that some of the sources are books, which can be hard if someone wants to look up more into the topic. They would have to purchase the book, etc. What I would do is, um, if you have a lot of, if most of the sources work, click on a couple of sources and just go through a list of a couple of those links and say, you know, um, link uh, footnote number seventeen is blah blah. blah. Um, when I click on the link, it takes me directly to directly to the Rolling Stone page um, about the artist or the ESPN article about the um, um, the athlete. Um, so, with references, click on the references to make sure that it ha um, that they're working, and then use a couple of examples um, and just kind of spell out to the reader how it works. Finally, this one, the one thing that they didn't talk about is balance. Balance is when um, an, uh, a Wikipedia article, make sure that the coverage doesn't include information that emphasizes something that doesn't need to be overemphasized. So it's um, the various aspects of the topic are balanced well. No aspect takes over the article and all aspects are covered. That's a great way of saying it. And so you can even use that language. So it says, the various aspects of the cheesecake article are somewhat balanced, although there are some necessary aspects missing. The history and description sections are the big sections of the article, and comparing them, the description section is longer than the history section, blah, blah, blah. Um, it, it draws attention to a fact that there's like a slight imbalance in um, the coverage, that there should be more information to balance out the information in other sections. That's, um, in a lot of cases, articles are well-balanced and you just show that they are well-balanced. If there's an aspect of their life that's a small aspect, it should have a small section. If there's an aspect of their life that's a big aspect, it should have a bigger aspect. Um, you just don't want one that's small to be exaggerated in something big or one that's big, something important, to be overlooked or um, shrunk into something small. So that's what balance is. Um, and then finally, the, um, the conclusion, this essay began with a quote from that article um, that we, um, the reading, and then it ended with a quote from that. It was really good. Um, I will put this um, into a PDF document and send this along with this um, video. In the meantime, um, since I can't connect with everyone one-on-one um, -on -one as much in a... Um, in a synchronous environment, like a live, um, a live cast of a lecture, since everybody's t schedule has changed, and I don't want to do it at eight o'clock in the morning, and I doubt anyone wants to get up that early. Um, please do make sure to use these videos, and also schedule office hours with me through Zoom, so that we can go over your um, your papers and your assignments together. All right, I'm looking forward to. Um, uh, talking, uh, seeing your essays, and um, I hope everybody is doing well.